Hello Summoners and welcome back to another exciting video. I'm your host Nathan Ng and today we'll be going over the 5 overpowered picks for high elo players. This list is catered towards emerald and higher players, so don't expect too much free elo if you're at a lower rank. We base all of our picks on overall player experiences with champions and how each elo reacts to the champion. A strong pick for a low elo like Garen does not always translate to high elo playstyles. Luckily we got you covered with our top 5 overpowered picks for this week. Before we begin, let's have a question of the day. What console do you want Wild Rift to be released on first? Sony's new PlayStation 5 and Microsoft's new Xbox Series X has been a hassle to get my hands on, but their graphical performance is truly game changing. But for me, I still want Wild Rift to come onto the Nintendo Switch. The Switch is already a mobile device with a touchscreen, so I wouldn't have to learn new button layouts. Plus, the size of the screen is so much more convenient for hands. But mostly, I just want to show off to my little cousin that my favorite game is in the eShop. Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. This week's meta has been changed to favor more fast and mobile champions that can gap close the instant they walk into lane. This behavior has allowed strong attack damage based champions like Rengar to dominate the rift. Rengar only came out a few weeks ago but has carved himself as a new staple jungler on the battlefield. The Wildcat has been ferocious since his release surprising everybody that he runs into with his bush jumping passive. Unseen Predator is an incredible passive ability that has three different passes built right into the kit. The first is the obvious one, his incredible bush jumping ability. This turns Rengar from a scary assassin into a horrifying beast as he's able to pounce out of bushes into the enemies, blast rooms, and even on incoming minions, not to mention the added benefits of being invisible and brushed before being able to jump on the enemy. The most amazing part of this ability is how well it works with items like Duskblade of Drakthar. Duskblade was buffed in patch 2.3, increasing its base damage from 50 to 55, giving champions an even greater edge on the opponents. But base damage is not what makes Duskblade such a horrifying threat. It's a secondary unique item passive, Night Stalker, that makes Duskblade such a menace. Being unseen for one second causes your next attack against a champion to deal physical damage and slow the enemy by 99% for a quarter of a second. This item combined with Rengar's passive makes for some pretty fast and decisive plays against squishier champions. Rengar pops out of the brush and presses all his abilities at the same time, leaving the enemies either dead or stranded with half a life bar. The best part is that Rengar can repeat the process all over again, and again, as long as there is a bush in range, Rengar can abuse it to track down the enemy champions. That's going over his synergy with his passive, but the results are the same with his ultimate. Duskblade was already a must-build item on Rengar's catalog, but increasing its damage just cemented itself as one of the first two items that Rengar needs to build, especially if he's running Electrocute. With great mobility and extra damage on the bush, Rengar swipes today's pick for our overpowered champions. Before we move on to the other lanes, we just want to say thank you for being part of the ProGuides community. It seriously means so much to us. Each and every one of you viewers helped shape the channel into what it is today, and input and feedback is always appreciated. For those of you guys looking to find more ways to get involved, join our Wild Rift Discord today. Speaking of champions with high mobility in the jungle, our second pick that's pleasantly powerful is Camille the Steel Shadow. Camille is a lady who's all about body enhancements, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, as these enhancements are used to their full capabilities when she's in the jungle, with her, you know, her knife legs, not anything else, get your head out the gutter. Her primary augmentation that helps her zip around the map is her third ability, Hookshot. Camille had her top scientist implant a grapple spindle device on both sides of her hips, allowing herself to swing while maintaining balance. Kind of like a 3D maneuver gear. In game, this allows her to jump over walls and invade enemy junglers with little repercussions. On top of that, at the end of her hookshot, she just knocks up any champion or monster that she runs into. Camille has ganking patterns that are solely unique because of this ability, where most champions have to do the pedestrian antics like walking around barriers and flashing over walls, Camille can just use her hookshot to quickly shoot to the location that she wants to be. She's strong as a jungler because she excels in ganking. Not only does her hookshot have a knockup built into it, but her second ability, Tactical Sweep, provides a huge cone in which she can slow the enemy. The enemies cannot be ignored as it lasts for 2 seconds and slows the enemy down by 80%. This should be enough for your laner to start helping you secure the kill, but if your laner is oblivious to all the pings, have no fear, because Camille's ultimate ability will make up for your teammate's lack of awareness. Camille's ultimate works the same way as Jarring the Fort's ultimate works, but instead only isolates just one target and they can't flash out of the zone. The Hextech ultimatum makes Camille temporarily untargetable as she creates a huge hexagonal zone around her target, knocking away all the other enemies on impact. This zone can last between 2 to 4 seconds depending on how much it has been upgraded and is the perfect ganking tool against all champions in the game. There is no way for the enemy to escape the hexagonal trap unless they're either going to kill Camille or knock her out of the hexagon. This is why Camille needs to be wary when ensnaring champions like Alistar because he can just ram her out of the ultimate's ability, making the whole endeavor fruitless. Speaking of endeavor, anybody watching the new My Hero Academia? <laughs> so good. 
<clears throat> anyway, being able to chase down the enemy and ensnare them is a major part of the current Wild Rift meta, and Riot's newest champion Riven over delivers in that category. Riven was once a loyal Noxian dog, taking out Ionian cities under her general's orders. Her ruthless acts as a Noxian earned her the Runic Blade. She continued fighting loyally and ferociously for Noxus until the war band sailed to Ionia. Riven was happy to fight to expand Noxus' borders, but never face enemies who wouldn't surrender. When it became clear to the Noxian forces that Ionian wouldn't back down, they decided to deploy Singed Gas to exterminate all the Ionians along with any Noxians who were unfortunate enough to still be on the battlefield. This event changed Riven, causing her to smash her Runic Blade alongside with any connection to Noxus. Riven's Runic Blade is now her passive, gathering sacks every time she uses an ability stacking up to three times. These stacks are used when she auto-attacks any enemies causing opposing enemies to take extra attack damage. This passive blends perfectly with her first ability Broken Wings. And yes, Broken Wings is plural because the ability can be recasted up to three times before needing a proper cooldown. The combos come together seamlessly with Riven jumping between using her first ability and landing auto attacks in between each cast. This damage can be exaggerated to an even greater degree when paired with Sheen items. An item like Triforce gives Riven 200% AD scaling on her next basic attack after using the first ability. This item combined with Riven's passive opens up unseen avenues of damage. All of Riven's abilities work into the framework of cast an ability and then auto attack. That's why they made Riven's second ability stun everybody around her. This gives Riven some time to auto, reset her next ability, and land even more devastating auto attacks. Triforce is not the only item that melds well with Riven's kit. Black Cleaver gives Riven utility that can't be replicated. Having 25% ability haste with an item passive that gives Riven extra movement speed is a must have. Black Cleaver simply delivers too many promising effects that help Riven in the game. Where Riven dominates in attack damage, Irelia makes up in versatility. Irelia, like Riven, wields broken blades that represent her life story. However, Irelia's broken blades tell a much sadder tale because they were originally part of the Shan Irelia's family crest. You see, Irelia was returning from Placidum, a place where she mastered the art of dance, only to find her home destroyed and plundered. Right at that moment, two Noxian soldiers were walking out of her home stealing the Shan family crest. The young 14-year-old dashed to the crest and took it from their arms. The small victory wouldn't last too long, as the admiral himself shoved her to the ground and ordered the Noxian soldiers to break the family crest. Irelia had lost everything, her siblings, her parents, her home, and now her family heirloom. Suddenly, with the feet of passion, Irelia started dancing with the Ionia spirit, causing the blades to mystically cut the two Noxian soldiers. <laughs> Sounds kind of ridiculous to me, but you know what, that's kind of cool. Quite literally with the power of dance, this gave Irelia enough time to gather the remaining pieces and flee the scene. Her resilience and grace is reflected in her abilities and gameplay. This symmetry can be seen in her second ability, Defiant Dance. In this stance, Irelia charges her blades around her while taking 50% reduced physical damage until she shoots her blade at the opponent dealing physical damage. Most of the time, Irelia uses this ability to tank heavy engages or deflect enemy poke. But if Irelia wants to strike back at her opponents, she can with her first ability, Blade Surge. This is a primary ability that keeps Irelia strong while attentive to her minion wave. Each dash deals physical damage while triggering on-hit abilities and healing herself. Irelia's Blade Surge is what keeps her sustaining in lane while dealing damage the opponent can't hope to avoid. These dashes deal bonus damage to marked targets which is basically anybody affected by her third ability or her ultimate. Irelia is truly the stylish blade dancer of the Baron and mid lane, and we recommend her as a top choice for this week's overpowered picks. Irelia might be the favorite newcomer on the Rift, but the always reliable Fiora is just as powerful as always. In fact, she might be even stronger than before. Right now, Fiora is heavily abused in all elos because of how safely Grasp fits into Fiora's kit. Grasp of the Undying is one of the primary runes in Wild Rift and allows champions to safely trade while gaining a small health bonus. The issue with Undying Grasp on Fiora is that her kit makes getting the stacks perfectly safe with almost no repercussions. Fiora just needs to sit in the minion wave, wait for the stacks to pile up, and then launch a lunge at the enemy's vital spot. And like that, she gains a free Grasp proc that permanently increases her health. The best part is, even if the enemy laner does go to retaliate and strike Fiora back, they can, because Fiora's repost can block any poke or return any CC directed at her. This means Fiora is able to freely poke the enemy champion every couple of seconds without taking damage herself. This is wildly unfair for Baron laners who just really have a difficult time asking junglers for assistance. To add even more salt into the wound, Fiora's poke can be elevated with sheen items like Triforce. Poking is one of the primary mechanics in any game, but in the Baron lane, you are mostly on your own, and Fiora has been quickly snowballing in this meta. 
This is not to mention that her vital points deal true damage to the enemy, so any armor buffing effects that they might use to prevent her poke will be rendered useless. Fiora's poke isn't the only thing Baron laners worry about. Her ultimate grand challenge is one of the most rewarding executes if landed properly. Once Fiora has dashed around the enemy hitting all of their vital spots, or if they die, they leave behind a victory zone that Fiora and all her allies could heal in. This is the final nail in the coffin, as Fiora literally bathes in the glory of her kill giving healing to her entire squadron. For flashy pokes and grand finishers, Fiora is a must pick for the future Wild Rift games. And that wraps up this week's high elo overpowered picks. The meta is always changing. Last week, it was a strong assassin meta led by Rengar and Kha'Zix. Now, this week, any 80 melee champions are coming out in the droves in terms of power. This is why you want to stay subscribed to Pro Guides to stay up to date with all the newest changes. I've been your host, Nathan Ng, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.